final NAB Cup triangular series takes us to the city of churches. The power's mission for respect starts now. While their crosstown rivals have a new coach and a new attitude. The Blues bust into this showdown, the first building blocks of their premiership campaign. Fox Footy presents this Twilight Clash. It's the final showing of round one of the NAB Cup and it's on a pretty hot stage for here in Adelaide. It's currently well over 30 degrees. The heat policy has been invoked. More on that shortly. But for Carlton, Port Adelaide and the Crows, it's time to strut their staff in match conditions for the first time in 2012. Hello and welcome to Fox Footy. I'm joined by Tony Shaw, who always did his <laughs> best work in the heat. Shorey, uh, in simplistic terms, welcome firstly, uh, but what does the heat policy mean? Well, the quarters have been cut down from 17 and a half minutes to 15, Jared. So probably each game, about five minutes of less game time. Thought the boys might have been able to put up with that after the big pre-season. Maybe a bit of sunscreen might have helped. It does make a difference when the uh, <laughs> sun bursts through the clouds, doesn't it? And it ups the ante by about uh, five or six degrees. But interesting situation here. We've got three coaches in very different circumstances. Well, we have Brenton Sanderson. He's going to have time to rebuild their um, their club, I would think. Uh, Matty Primus, well, doesn't get off the good stuff, Jared. The pressure will build and mm. build a lot more. And uh, also Brett Ratton. Now, no, they the, won finals last year. I think they want to win premierships. And they come out and said, top four, that means you want to win a premiership. Let's take a look at today's games and first and foremost we've got uh, Port Adelaide versus Carlton then uh, Port will have a rest and it'll be Adelaide versus the Blues and our final match is uh, a showdown of sorts, the two hometown teams Adelaide versus Port Adelaide and to take us to the opening bounce here's Dwayne Russell upstairs. Dwayne? Thanks, Jared. Tony, hard to predict what's going to happen this afternoon, but somebody had to frame a market, so sportsbet.com.au have been good enough to frame the market, and it's strange the odds when you look at them in detail, given that Port Adelaide is the home team against Carlton in Game 1, but they will start as the underdog. Carlton, the favourite, at $1.40. Carlton and Adelaide a little closer. Adelaide will start as the favourite in that game, the first game for new coach Brenton Sanderson. And then the showdown light, the mini showdown, Adelaide and Port Adelaide, the final game of the three-game series, the Adelaide Crows, $1.43. Crowd starting to build here. Can't wait for this one to get underway and can't wait to hear what Port coach Matty Primus has had to say. How are you? We've got three coaches set up here for the spread out of the stoppage. How do you go, mate? Feeling good? Just enjoy it, eh? Just enjoy it, run around, no be competitive. Just use up all the work you've done, right? Over the last three or four months. No worries. Just stacks of voice down there with, yeah. with Chappie. Yeah. Just directed Casbolt, Casbolt is it, and uh, Cruiser and Hampson will be their tools. Yeah. That's all it is, so the rest will be small, so. Yeah. Well, that Casbolt will play for you, reckon? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah, he'll play for it. And then Cruiser and Hampson will just go deep, so. Oh, I still got it. <laughs> Let's not really get worried about matchups and all that kind of stuff. Just keep yeah. our structures right so and all that kind of stuff there. So. Good breed, You'll drop one of these in yourself for the whole game, won't you? Yeah. Good place, Johnny Mac! Johnny Mac! <laughs> just heaps of, oh, oh, got it, mate. Heaps, of yak, heaps of yak into red oak. Just yep. keep them going, keep them in tune with the game. Oh. finished just outside the top four in 2011, but made their mark in a dominant elimination final win. Their semi-final against the Eagles was one for the ages, but it's the result that will haunt them. They've set lofty goals for this season, aiming higher than a top four finish. Their season starts now. Welcome back to Amy Stadium. The season does start now for Carlton. Carlton and Port Adelaide, the first of the three games this afternoon. Looking forward to seeing a number of the young players out there for the Blues. Josh Bootsma is going to be out there, uh, son of Brad. So they've got a little bit of football blood in Brad Bootsma's son, Josh. Dylan Buckley is going to play. There is Josh Bootsma. Looks a little Craig Bradley-like, actually, with the old curly hair, skinny kid, the number 21. So looking forward to seeing him go around it. Well, the great Jim Buckley's uh, son is out there as well. He's going to play in game two. We can't wait to see him unveiled. 
Well, I think he'd be half as good as his dad, uh, <laughs> Dwayne, and playing as many premierships as his dad, uh, Shura. You would have played uh, many games against Jimmy. They've got a beauty. And if he's half as tough, <laughs> they've got a ripper. <laughs> yeah, he made his debut as a 16-year-old, so uh, the rules have changed a little bit since Jim Buckley made his debut. But there are a couple of the new fa uh, faces you're going to see, new numbers. Levi Casbold in the number 41 jumper. Hasn't played a senior game for Carlton yet, but we're looking forward to seeing him unveiled as well. So... It's what it's all about, the NAB Cup. Trialling some players, bigger squads because of the heat. It's about 36 to 37 degrees out there right now. Port Adelaide also with some new players. You saw Brad Ebert on screen wearing the number seven. And it's a famous Port Adelaide number. His uncle Russell wore it with distinction. So it's great to see an Ebert back in the number seven. But we've also got their number one draft pick as well. Unveiled Chad Wingard. One Chad departs for Port Adelaide and another one arrives. They're hoping for big things from Chad Wingard. So Port Adelaide in their away strip for this home game against the Blues. Looking forward to having a look at uh, big number 34 on the left of screen. He's uh, had a couple of showings, but uh, sure, just talking to a couple of Port Adelaide people. He's trained the house down. He's a big strapping bloke who played well in the uh, local league over the last couple of years, and they reckon he's ready to go in the rush. Well, they have to, Jerry, because Dean Brogan, of course, uh, has moved on, and uh, he was a great stalwart for them. Yeah, there's a couple of things. I'd like to look of John McCarthy. Um, they talk, you talked about Ebert, Brad Ebert, too. Two senior players who know how to play at the level straight away, and they needed that port. I think the other one... Uh that we need to see today is a really big improvement out of uh, Robbie Gray. And I think you're only going to see it if he gets an opportunity in the midfield. midfield yeah. The suggestion is that uh, they're going to give him every opportunity to succeed there. But whenever he's gone into that midfield, he's made a difference. They've always thought that uh, perhaps they need his firepower around the forward line. Well, they need to get it in there. They got the ball inside forward 50 so few times last year, Shuri. It was, uh, it was almost embarrassing. They've got to get it in there to give uh, whoever's down there an opportunity. He saw Jared Redden in the number 34, one of those who's about to be unveiled for Port Adelaide as we head downstairs. Welcome to Glenn Jakovic. Thanks very much, Dwayne. Well, ground temperature is 27 degrees. They're expecting 34, but the humidity is quite strong. Uh, I managed to watch Port Adelaide in their warm-up, and I was just pretty impressed just the way they were going about it. Spoke to uh, Buddha Hocking, and one of the things he outlined that's a non-negotiable this year is about being competitive. Every contest, every minute, every quarter of every game. And I think from a side that finished at the bottom of the ladder last year, that's something that uh, they need to really work on. Conversely, I spoke to Brett, Brett Ratton, and he's certainly excited about the year ahead. He's uh, got all these players up and about, not too many injuries, but uh, they are certainly looking forward for a hit out here this, uh, this afternoon, boys. Thanks, Jacko. This is the last of the three-way series matches in round one of the 2012 NAB Cup. If you're new to the NAB Cup, you haven't been watching on Fox Footy so far, every team plays four NAB Cup games this year with the two best-performed teams after their four games advancing to the NAB Cup Grand Final. And today's games, because of the heat, are going to be 17 and a half minutes per half, plus time on. 17 and a half minute halves plus time on due to the 34 to 36 degrees we're expecting. Good to see Kane Corns uh, back on the ground. There's always been speculation as to his future. It was uh, pretty messy midway through last year. There were suggestions he might have gone uh, to the Giants with his brother, but he's still here and he's obviously earning his place in the team in the opening NAB Cup match. So as we mentioned, Redden for Port Adelaide in the ruck. First up to Roden to Ebert gets his first touch in a Port Adelaide jumper. West off, half forward. Dragged off a little, hat wide from the boot of Jeremy Laidler for the Blues. Brad Ebert again, Stewart, Boak, and that's probably holding the ball. Port's number one player last year, Travis Boak, got winner of the best and fairest, most possessions for them for the year. Hampson, hands to it. Roden got it from Pierce. Kane Corns, Surgeon, just got a toe on that in time. Cassisi, heads wide. Crowd has built in the last few minutes, which is good news. John McCarthy, new player for Port Adelaide, of course, having crossed from Collingwood, 18 games there. Oh, David. To Brad Ebert. Laidler, good fist, knocked it down. Well, that could be ball. He tried to fend off there, Aaron Joseph. Umpire was wise to it. 
Westhoff lurking at full forward, waiting for this. Butcher's down there as well. Westhoff in the spot. Butcher, third man up. Gee, he brought that down, didn't hold it long enough. Watson caught a little high for the Blues. Boat steals it back, tries to get away. Ball. Should have marked it then, Johnny Butcher. It just shows, Dwayne, a few of these players are a bit rusty. The pressure of this first hit out against a real opposition. Here's Crow getting into it already. High ball, and this is Kerr for the Blues, throwing Kerr. Oh, interesting decision to centre the ball. I think most clubs in the AFL have spent the summer going the boundary line, but uh, yeah. on the first opportunity, he came in board. Maybe it was just instinct. He hasn't been there long enough. Surgeon <laughs> tries to get away from Boots. My hands to Gray. This will be for nine from just outside the paint, but he misses. Yeah, you'd think you'd obey team rules if it's essentially... <laughs> He has played NAB Cup before Rowan Kirst. Well, hasn't not, played a senior AFL game yet. We're not to know exactly that it's against team rules. I guess uh, each coach <laughs> will have his uh, cake and eat it too. Wanting to go around the boundary. If you go in board, you better make it uh, stick. Otherwise, it'll be hell to pay. A few Mick Malthouse clones getting around at the moment. Laidler. Disciples of the great Mick Malthouse. Stealing a little of his game plan. Heading well, wide. When you slow play, you're going to have to do this and have to kick right down the line anyway. But I still think you have to look in the centre corridor if it's free and open. But, yeah, you're right, Jared. You've got to hit the target. Pfeiffer on his hands and knees for Port Adelaide. Couldn't get it free. Redden lays a tackle. No one breaking free initially. It's a huge amount of players around this ball. High tackle. Ben Jacobs' ball. So already the rotations. Ebert comes off for an early rest. Gray through his fingertips. And that went through hands and then rolled out. So it'll only be a ball in. And the question, Shuri, is going to be one of uh, percentages. Was the percentage to pinpoint that pass in between four players uh, high enough to not take the extra distance of a long kick down the line? Well, it probably wasn't, especially when it doesn't hit the target. But, yeah, you've got to let initiative play. But you're right, Jerry. Most sides will be pushing around the boundary, keeping out of the corridor. And, uh, but when they're on, it's the only way you're going to really hurt a defence both sides of the ground. Stewart breaks free. Long again to West off the target. Fourth man up this time. Laidler manhandled off at no free. West off to Corns. Has the snap. Opening goal to Port Adelaide. Well, we saw the long bomb come into vogue in the grand final where the uh, Cats just got some distance and got it down to uh, Tommy Hawkins and co and uh, they had plenty of people at the feet and I suspect we're going to see plenty more of this long bomb to a couple of tools and then a really handy handball just uh, laid off to Corns which established their first goal and they got some uh, height down there with a ball in the, the bloke with the ball in his hands and of course uh, Butcher was yep. one of the uplifting acts for Port Adelaide last year Kane Corns, who struggled a little last year to convince Matty Primus he was in their best 18. Good start for him. Good running, though. He's off a wing and he's pushed right into uh, become a crumbing player. Gray to Broadbent. Rolls one to half forward. Good attack from Butcher. Umpire said it was a poor attempt at a handball, though. <laughs> Gee, he hit that ball well, though, yeah. didn't he, Dwayne? Just showed the speed that he's got also. But he butchered it when he got it. Lucas, half back for the Blues. So again, they push it wide. Just uh, had the opportunity to cruise past Matthew Watson for the Blues and couldn't believe how big he is. Roden caught from behind. Kate Simpson to send them into attack. Cruz is lurking. It's in his direction. He's up. And not quite. Arnfield likewise not quite. Cruz got a toe on it. Oh, gee, I thought that was nearly an accidental kick off the ground. It looked like it. And Port Adelaide peel to the open side here. Corns, Surgeon, they want to use the corridor. And they use it well in the end. Pierce. Kick smothered. That wasn't part of the plan, though. Kerno. Turns are there, dangerous. Ellard, Lucas. At least they're hassling them backwards, yes. though. Good pressure from Port Adelaide. That's a Port Adelaide free. It rolls out without being touched. And under the NAB Cup Round 1 rules, that's a free kick. Just want to go back and uh, just acknowledge Jackson Trengo for how well he played full-back against Cruiser. 
in that last entry. It was a cruiser mark through and through, and he did it really well. Clever flick on to Ebert, who started this game well at his new club. Butcher, pocket, marks. And 50 move. Yeah, and 50. Yes. And that would have been a difficult shot from there. So you said he's a big boy, Matthew, Matthew Watson, Watson, but uh, he used a bit too much strength there. No, uh, he was a silly boy then, and I think he tried to disguise it, but the umpire was up, he was on his feet and fell over Johnny Butcher after he marked the ball. Easy goal here. That one player's had a massive influence. Brad Ebert already, that's that senior, already, uh, senior player within you. Well done to Robbie Gray then, smart football. Ebert just came off the interchange bench, had five possessions so far. But McCarthy and Ebert, they just add that experience which they've lost through Chad Corns, Brogan, a couple of others. The other move I like is Daniel Pierce behind the ball. Yeah. He's uh, been beset by taggers almost every time he stepped out onto the ground since his introduction half a dozen years ago. And I think having really clever players who can break lines and deliver the ball behind the masses uh, is going to be almost a must in modern day footy. And sure, you mentioned about Brad E, but one of the criticism that he had in the past was hitting that target, and you talk about maturity, a couple of years later he's able to hit that target, which is important for him. Be careful there, it was almost a bit of tunnelling, uh, Dwayne. Yeah, Hampson gets up now, he's okay, Scotland Trengo takes the mark, so he's okay, Hampson, he's moving, a little slowly, but hopefully he's okay, he's got hands on his knees right now, we'll keep Dangerous an eye on kick him. here. Roden, good grab that, under some pressure. Cassisi wanted it out wide so he could run, and he can get and go. Got a short option. Ebert again. Off the left. Hands to Stewart. He could long bomb it. Butcher stands under it. He's got a couple to beat, and Hampson, or well, maybe he's not quite all right. Couldn't take that mark. Gathers his own Crumwell. Joseph White, Scotland. Fumble. And gets away from Corns with an easy handball to Rowan Kerr. Jeez, he did well there, he Scotland. It was a dangerous kick out. He snaffled it with one arm, dropped it, but recovered. Again, they stick wide to the boundary. Move it on! Play on! Chaplin, Trengo, they were both there. Well, no Carlisle, so Trengo's taken the full back position and uh, Chaplin at centre half back. So when they're all up and about, they've got three very big defenders. Chad Wingard, first game for Port Adelaide. Their prize pick in the draft. Splendid use of the ball there, Broadbent. He was in nine point range there. He went for Butcher, and not a bad option. It's a little wide. But the Blues still yet to score, and they're shorter halves because of the heat this afternoon. That was an interesting kick, Shuri. Oh, well, had length on it. I'm this matchup, I'm just watching it now, and Matthew Watson, he's been turned around two or three times by John Butcher. Just shows he's smart, Johnny Butcher. We'll see how he kicks this, Dwayne. I don't know whether he just go for a normal drop punt from that angle and not come inside. Still opened up a little bit, I would. It was an instant hit last year. Had that six-goal game against the Dogs. It's the post. Another instant hit. Yes. And they've named him the, the future, boys. That's his nickname amongst the Port the Adelaide future, players. Is the it? future. Well, he had that big one month yeah. Yeah. at the end of last year, and uh, Port Adelaide managed to retain a lot of those young players, and they've nicknamed him the future. Okay. And we've got a lot of the past here in the commentary box. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson Trengo might be a little upset. He's the future as well. Is there's a few. Chad Wingard, Hampson flies in the pack. Off hands. Kerno. Amble comes out in the end, but unfortunately for the Blues, Casbolt. In the number 41 jumper, couldn't make something of it. Carrazzo might open up here. So this looks good. Scotland. Chased down by Westhoff. He's making some ground. Bauer. Great it's running from Robbie Kerr. Yeah. Sits up. Pierce gets the fist away, but Kerr might still gather his own crumb. Dives in. Westhoff just as committed. Make that run, Kerr. Westhoff. Pierce. The Freudian slip there. Yep. Roden. And he sits it up a little. Tough one to be grabbing. Oh, Robbie Gray plays for the free. Doesn't get it. Gee. Stewart. So he's got a couple over the top. Boak. Backtracks. Oh, and he read some magic there. Well, they just worked. didn't work hard enough, Shorey. When they lost the ball in the forward line, the Blues, it was a nice little uh, reverse transition by Port Adelaide. They were prepared to run harder with the ball and a goal opportunity in their sights. 
And the Blues defenders, I think, would be entitled to have a union meeting saying, uh, boys, how about getting down and helping? Because they're outnumbered about six to three. So Chad Wingard, wearing Dean Brogan's old number 20. He was their pick six in last year's draft. They've invested a bit in him. Another post. Gee, that was an amazing setup at running and kick the goal. No, no momentum through the running, Jared. You probably know it better than me, but it looked like he was a bit scared to even kick it at the end. Nerves getting to the youngster. It could have been his first shot at the big ones. But they reckon they found one, Port Adelaide Dwayne, with this young kid. Yeah, they would have been uh, happy to take him. If they had picked four, they would have taken him. They were happy he got through to pick six. Big fly, Casbolt couldn't bring it down. Off some hands, Collins. Back to Lucas. Cruiser, caught. Trengove, jumped on. Cruiser gets it back. He's jumped on. Pack of ten around it. Umpire will have to sort it out. A lot sharper, Port at the moment. Their hands are a lot sharper, especially coming off halfback and moving through the lines. Let's go down to the Blues coach's box. Alan Richardson has been good enough to join us, and uh, the Blues can't find a forward at the moment, Alan. Hello. You there, boys? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, str certainly struggling to get our hands on the footy in the midfield. Uh, obviously, forward of the ball, we've probably rolled up a little bit too far. And we just noticed that last goal. Didn't think your midfield uh, supported your defence all that well on the turnover. No, look, certainly our, uh, our, our fat side running to get back and support has been something we focused on. That was disappointing play, absolutely. Thanks to Alan Richardson in the Carlton coach's box. We'll be back to him again shortly. In the meantime, Kurnow lays a tackle on Boak. Slick hands. Corns knocks it out. Roden, twist, gets the handball up. Wingard again, gets another chance. Oh. It's the post again. It's three in the quarter. Two shots, two posters for Chad Wingard, and one to the butcher. <laughs> so this time down the middle, Kerno. I think one of the things that Port Adelaide would be pretty pleased with, in particular Matthew Primus, is that the, that the stoppages they've done really well, and they were just uh, in a level of mediocrity of their own at that element uh, last year. Collins, the target at half forward, probably not the optimum target. Surgeon back to Redden. Kind bounce for the big man. Hands it off, and again, Port Adelaide want to play the corridor if they can. Cassisi, their captain and general, he heads wide because he had no other option. That's a good work rate for Butcher. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's right in front of me here, Dwayne. I saw him. He was in the forward pocket. That's an 80 metre lead. Yeah, more of that. And Port Adelaide might slowly rise up the ladder. Daniel Stewart, another one of their 200 centimetre players. Hoping to become a permanent. 23 games so far, but still really young of games. This is Paul Stewart. It's a make or break year in many ways for Daniel Stewart, though, Dwayne. I think he's been on the cusp of dominating. I'm not sure what his work rate is like or his training rate, but, yeah. rate, but gee, he just shows so much in glimpses in matches. It's hard to cut 200 centimetre players. Gray flies and beaten for it by Watson. Yeah, you kind of have to give 200 centimetre players a little bit longer than you would someone of about 185, just in case. Pierce pops it back. Roden, he could take off here. Westhoff looks at him, ignores him, and kicks it behind. Well, they have totally dominated this first quarter, and the Blues, you're, they're just really letting down across half forward. They've got everybody most pushing up the ground. I still think you need to keep a forward structure of at least three players in your forward half. It's a get-out clause. That's so, a good kick. A nice pass to Rowan Kerr, who fumbles it. Goes with the short kick. And there's an option. This is Mitch Carter for the Blues. We're trying to get a score before the half time, Siren. Two minutes to half time, Arnfield. Had to work hard for that as well. Heads wide. Stewart went up, couldn't bring it down for Port Adelaide. Into his back. She's Sean Hanson. He went for that mark. He had front position. He looks like he's off the bit, Dwayne. Mm. <laughs> Running back through the 50 metre arc now. There he goes near the 50 metre sign. He just cannot get there. The sender inside 50. Levi Casbolt, the target. Pfeiffer did well. Knocks oh. it down. He did poorly. Collins off the ground. Wasn't touched. We might be going to the video, but it's a golden goal.
Well, you can just, the players were appealing to the umpire saying, we believed it was touched on the line, but the umpire said, no, he was in the better position. Let's have a look at it here, because we can go to the third eye. <laughs> what, well, the, what, are, the, what is the terminology for that? The whole of the ball oh. has to be across the line. Now, the umpire surely, I think, Jeff Keeshan can now call for a review of that before they bounce the ball. They've got until the bounce of the ball in the centre well, I would. to review that because the whole of the ball is not across the line. So the umpires here still haven't bounced it. They can still review it. Not anymore. They've stopped it just... No. Well. Brad Ebert's just come off, boys, and he's uh, talking. He's still remonstrating. He believes that he did touch it. Okay, Gorns launches it toward the square. Off some hands, Roden back of the pack. Well, there's one for you on the couch on Monday night, night Jared. Not sure there's too much debate about that one, Brian, to be honest. Uh, do you want the players to have the ability to ask the umpire? No, well, actually, you don't mind. A, a well, they have it in cricket. Like, but, but I can understand it would be used tactically to waste time, etc. But uh, I don't. Would, I don't. I'd when you have it. a situation like that, if you've got the third umpire, you've got to review those that are uh, contentious like that. The players don't have any say whether the review takes place, but there's umpires in a box up here with us that are watching exactly what we saw, and they elected not to overrule or review it, which is very strange given the new rules. Time ticking here to half time, 45 seconds and counting. Carlton's last five minutes have been good. Trengo, nice grab, but it'll be a blue sure, ball. Hanson, irrespective of that, it was just great to see Trengo go for the mark. He had the courage to go for it instead of just a big punch from behind. Gee, Armfield's forward here. And Cruiser gives Not it to him. Not a good kick. Chaplin, it sits. Chaplin gets a fist on it. Seconds continue to roll. Pierce. Good attack. Armfield. Broadbent. Saves the day with 25 seconds left on the clock. Poke pass. Port Adelaide might be a chance at a late score. John McCarthy. And that's why I think Daniel Pierce is uh, it's a good position for him to play. Robbie Gray up. Fisted away from him. Ebert, he might have to snap with the right. But it was all wrong from the time it left his boot. But at that contest, it was again Shorey. Three for Adelaide players to two Carlton players. So only enough time for a Carlton turnover here. Not enough time for a Carlton score. Laidler will have to be cautious with this kick. Bring it in. And not a bad option, the long bomb. Cruiser. Good hands. But the siren sounds for half time. And a contentious decision by the umpires and the umpires who can review the decisions by the umpires. have seen Carlton have a good last few minutes of this opening half of game one. Carlton just the one goal, Port Adelaide 2-7-19. It's Adelaide and Carlton in game two and then Adelaide and Port Adelaide in the mini showdown for game three. So plenty of football still to come. But half time here it's at it's Amy been Stadium. A it's it's by been 13. a goal kicked here. There's a 50 metre penalty to Cruiser. Matty Cruiser it's on the side. This is massive. What's it's gone here? to a night. The play played on because he had the mark. 50 metre penalty was paid. And the Port Adelaide players have came to the huddle thinking they're going to go into the club rooms. And then Cruiser's kicked a nine point goal. There was one Port Adelaide player who running was switched back. on running back. I thought he was actually warming up as a substitute to come on. Then all of a sudden, the umpire is right beside him. And a goal has been produced by Matthew Cruiser, a nine pointer. Which After is the an astounding finish to this quarter. <laughs> so Cruz was marked. He marked before the siren. Yes, he did. And then the infringement and he was came. 50. But it looked like everybody didn't hear the infringement of the 50. Cruiser did. He's ran forward. And as Jared said, there was only one Port Adelaide player running inside 50. Couldn't get there on time. Here we see it again here. So Cruiser takes the mark. There it is. That's a free yeah. kick of the mark. Now, someone's got over the match. It's a 50-metre penalty. No doubt right. about that. There Everybody's goes the siren. Still, everybody must think the game's over. So Cruz has kicked it there. Yeah. So doesn't that kick count? No, no. Are... No, he, ha he has to be, be... The umpire now would have run back for the 50-metre to stand right. on the mark. So the Cruz's play on there doesn't count after the siren? No. Well, and the he's umpire didn't, the... Ca didn't see it anyway, even if it did. But here he is. Here's Matty Cruz. He's, he's running through the centre. This is cruising at its uh, <laughs> pen. Now he's got the ball back. No one's on it. Look, here we go. Bloke down below here. Chaplin's onto it. In fact, he could have got another 50 because uh, he was still creeping over the mark. That is the most extraordinary Amazing. nine pointer we've ever <laughs> seen in NAB Cup history. Hope you're enjoying watching Fox Footy bring it to you live from Amy Stadium. And for Carlton fans, you're back in it. 1 1 15.
A super goal helping Carlton to get within four points at half time. Port Adelaide 2 7 19. at Port Adelaide is to get the footy club back to where it belongs, at the top. We know where we are at and we know we have a lot of hard work ahead of us. And we're the first to admit that. But I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. There's great camaraderie at the footy club and we're determined to have the winning feeling return to Alwyn. Our mission is to compete and to give our all every game this season. To get back the respect that we've been missing. We are Port Adelaide. We are a great club with a great history and a great future. Half time, game one here at Amy Stadium. That is Port Adelaide's mission. Jackson Trengove with their ad has been going to air here in Adelaide. And at half time of game one, our mission is to find out what happened <laughs> after the siren with Matthew Cruz's super goal. Carlton at the moment just four points behind Port Adelaide. So a good start to Port, but a good finish to the half for the Blues. Let's have a look at this again. Matthew Cruiser marks this ball and he marks it just outside the 50. So he takes that mark, then he gets 50 and the siren sounds, but here he plays on and has a kick away. No, he, now, he, the umpire says, no, I'm giving you your kick again. So then 50 metres from there should take him to just still inside the centre square here. Because the centre square is 50 metres. According to the rules, that's right, the centre square is... So, in essence, he's run over the mark, which should be play on as well as no, soon as you run over the mark. I'd like to see that again, because I think you could see the umpire forward of his kick, okay. setting the mark and then going backwards just before he kicked the ball. So, yeah, he, got lucky, the he, got he got a lucky... So, the umpire said he isn't behind his mark. So, he got a lucky 60-metre penalty. Yeah, no doubt. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> Caught by our cameras, and it helps the Blues stay right back in this game. Four points the margin. Well, both their goals were contentious, as we know. Uh, no phone call coming through from the Geesh to uh, have a look at the one that was on the line. We'll take a look at that uh, at the end of this match as well. But uh, therein lies very much the future of this, uh, the future chances of this footy club. Glenn Jankovic downstairs. Hey, mate. Um, what was a disappointing first quarter? Yep. Uh, good initiative by Matty Cruiser at the end. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I thought uh, Port Adelaide were first in for the ball. They outnumbered us. They won the footy, and I think the possession showed about 80 to about 50. So, yeah, they did uh, what we would like to have done. But, um, yeah, to their credit, they got away, and then thank goodness for Cruz's nine-pointer. Uh, 10 to 2 in the inside 50s. What was the message at quarter time about injecting yourself back in the game? I thought we just sagged a lot. We just sort of didn't get up and get in their face and stop some outlets with our defensive work. And I thought we just really were waiting for the ball to come inside 50 to rebound instead of actually cutting it off and reducing some of those inside 50s. Thanks, mate. All the best. Now, waiting is the optimum word here because Carlton has been out in position for the last 60 seconds. Port Adelaide is still inside in the rooms. This is getting more bizarre by the minute. <laughs> Oh, well, this is this is ridiculous, really. The sirens have gone to say you should be out there. I think they, they will be penalised for that. Well, the half-time um, breaks are extended from six minutes to ten. I think they're obviously taking 12. a full <laughs> ten minutes plus. <laughs> or Carlton didn't take enough. And an AFL official has just run down the race. He's not very happy, boys. Did he okay, have a please Jacko. explain in his well, I think they'll get one during the week. I think they'll get one during the week, boys. <laughs> Just one thing, Jared. You spoke about the Port Adelaide midfield. This is a test for the Carlton midfield. Now, we see Bryce Gibbs in there. He didn't play in the first part, uh, quarter. But, you know, with no Judd, no Murphy, Gibbs not being... I reckon they really failed in that test in the first half. They were smashed around the, the stoppages, as you said. So, you know, a lot of these Carlton players are playing for positions uh, to either back up if something happens to some of their stars. Yep. Well, Adelaide's another one. He's in there. I mean, they've got Cruiser in there, which adds more mobility. Uh, I think they've got... They're well served by... Ruckman, as we know, they've got uh, three viable options. One of them uh, still not uh, ready to go just yet. But uh, they've got two out there, and they can both play back and uh, in the middle. They can play, both play forward. But you've got to have the work rate from the wings and the half forwards and the half backs. And the work rate was subpar as not only the stats show, but uh, as their coach just pointed out to us. And Dwayne, it might have been that uh, Carlton might have understand that they did get an extension of 10 minutes because we believe it is 10 minutes for Port. So maybe they haven't read their. Uh, so we're told that Port Adelaide took the correct allotment of time and Carlton got out there a little early. <laughs> That's been relayed to us officially, so there won't be a fine for Port Adelaide. But is there any advantage going in the uh, change rooms, boys? No. 
<laughs> Gibbs. I don't mean to be cynical, but the clearance uh, I think it burns more energy. Is the sun uh, behind the clouds at the moment, Jack? Yes, it certainly is. Okay. They're actually calling some rain, boys. Are they? Yep. When's that arri due to arrive, Sure. I don't know, but one of the groundsmen brought me an umbrella. I said, okay. please, please, I don't need one. He says, it's going to rain. Armfield to Scotland. So, good start here for the Blues. They might get an early shot. Collins dives. Mark's on 50. This will only be for six. Nice interception by Matty Cruiser from, uh, it was a Brett Ebert handball. He's going to have a shot. Even if he kicks this from outside the 50-metre arc, it's only a six-pointer. Good hole. And goes for the pass and the mark for Hampton. Yeah, it was a really good hole left by the Carlton players and poor defence by Port Adelaide. They were just looking around, Shuri. They weren't covering for each other. And big Sean Hampson, who I think has got a genuine opportunity to establish himself as a tall forward or a tall marking option down there, has got a chance to uh, slot one early. You might be seeing them a little better now after the laser eye surgery over summer. Helped correct a vision problem that he had. Good kick. And he is seeing them well. The Blues in front. Well, I th saw Sean Hampson along with everyone else, Sean, sure, wow. uh, down against Richmond in the opening round last year. And here's the hole that you're talking and, about. And Kane Corns, you can see, 15 metres inside. He had to drop into that spot yep. and go back harder than that, Jared. If well, I had was, to be aware that it was a possibility. No doubt. And then probably the lead wouldn't be as hard. Trengove gets a chance to get in there. You've got to, you've got to put your body on the line, and your teammates ask of you to put your body on the line and get in that spot. I think it was more just an awareness issue rather than uh, not trying to avoiding any uh, physical issue. But this bloke in round one last year, he grabbed a couple in the opening minutes and I thought, hello, this is going to be fantastic. Didn't quite work out, but certainly worth persevering for for this year. Cruz a perfect palm, but unfortunately for him, ricocheted to Red and his opposite Ruckman. Tui tried to knock it on, stolen from him. Boat squeezed a kick past Corns. Rolling ball, Carter gets another possession for the Blues. Hands it back. Oh. Scotland tried the one-two with Carter, who in his first game found it hard to read Scotland's mind. Hasn't really played with him before. Hellard gets away with it, but it's a turnover. Jacobs, Chaplin, tackle. they combine to mess it up. Garlick, who didn't play in the first half of this game, now gets a run in the second half. Pfeiffer from half back for Port Adelaide to West off at half forward. Scotland makes it a two on one. Ebert crumbs, short, pocket, just out of the reach of Stewart. Watson. Didn't really want to drag it out deliberately. Stewart steals it back again. Centering kick, top of the square. Roden. Well, it's great work by five for defence, but uh, Brad Ebert's work rate, sure, yeah. is unbelievable. We know he, sometimes he can uh, kick the ball sideways, but I think even that's been overplayed in recent times. He's worked really hard to improve on that, and he's a pretty fair kick now. But, gee, he is running as hard as anybody else out on the ground. Good to see David Roden out there. Had two of the Lars ligament knee restrings over time. And he misses him directly out. That wasn't his normal approach to goal, sure. He got really close to the man on the mark. Just have a look at here, uh, Jared. I thought you were nice to Kane Corns. That's what Kane Corns had to do filling that gap as he Scotland went back with his man. Leave his man, know that you're going to maybe get a knee in the back but just go through with it. So I no, accept that point, yeah. but I don't think he was aware that the kick was coming and he was too late to even attempt it. West off, Port Adelaide calls the turnover on West off goals. Brilliant stuff. Port Adelaide back in front. He may have hurt himself. He certainly did. Big year for West off as well, sure. He's super talented. Well, Port Adelaide are going to go up the ladder. They've got to uh, get more out of him on a regular basis. Oh, look, I think he's a talented player. I'd, I'd love to see him even have his five-minute runs in the, on the ruck to get a bit of freedom. Jared, you know, sometimes you have a hard period as a key forward, or one of the keys forward, but a uh, very talented player. Looks cool. lackadaisical a lot of times. That's a bit the of pointy a pointy elbows, point. too, yeah. I think, as well. Port Adelaide wearing black armbands today for Maxine Boyd, mother of a couple of Port Adelaide SNFL stars, Greg and Russell Boyd, and the wife of Dave Boyd, long time great superstar and great servant as an administrator of the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Trengove, Pfeiffer, dispossessed. Pierce heads wide. Jacobs through his legs, swore it out of it there. Kane Lucas. 
He wobbles one, and it's way too wide for anyone. Cool. Well, the Blues have got to find a couple, surely, to uh, put their hand up in this next ten or so minutes, because otherwise it's a wasted opportunity by a lot of their youngsters. A number of players, I think, in Carlton, and they're seeing the underbelly, you would think, their kicking ability. We saw Arfield turn it over that caused that goal before, and Kane Lucas had not the greatest technique of dropping the ball down on the boot then. West off all the way to half back. Underbelly has been associated with Carlton once before, sure. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> Surgeon, Boak, Corns, the old firm combining, Broadbent, great. Well worked. Open forward line. Gray needs to pick an option. Even the hot hand off his forehead. It's a hot kick as well. Gibbs. Better work rate from some of the forwards, just getting some space. Garlic. Centering kick. Tringo. Secondary punch away from Casbolt. Hands it to Jacobs. Fumble. Garlic makes something of it. Handball to Hampson. He gives to Lucas. Sprayed the last one. Aims this one well. Carlton back in front. Just a little bit better work rate uh, by more numbers there from the Blues. They chopped this up here, Port Adelaide. They had it off and away, and there was a couple of fumbles there. And then good rebound by the Blues and some support running. Could have been a handball over the top. Didn't need it. That was the one, Benny Jacobs, he went before he had it. Straight through the hands and the inside 50 turnover. I think what was more disappointing, uh, Shorey, with that, once he went to ground, his second and third effort was non-existent. Mm. Blues will stay out there for game two and meet the Adelaide Crows. Port Adelaide will have the rest and meet Adelaide in game three. Cassisi to Corns, Boak. Wingards look good. Pierce running off half back. Likewise, has looked spectacularly good at times. And he launches that. Tough one to mark. West off. Caught behind. Scotland too good. Interesting decision by Wingard to stop when he had it. He was on his left foot. He could have gone around and played on and banged it in. And yet, uh, in and around the 60 metre, he elected to sit back and wait. Lucas and Armfield beaten by Gray. Marks on 50, runs inside. Could have given Port Adelaide the lead. It's across Mark. the face. Wingard's marked that on the line. Plays on quickly. Oh. Not 15 was the call. Stewart has to hand it off. Westhoff with a toe. But scores a level. Robbie Gray is a huge talent. Sure, he sure. just got to play. I think he needs to be released a bit to the yeah. middle so he can get involved a little bit more. Pretty tough when you're playing on the side of the bottom of the ladder. You're playing inside the forward 50. Just what we've seen tonight, or this afternoon, he looks like he's setting himself. Carrazzo, back pocket. Watson, their designated kick-in man, as he was at times last year. Now Bauer. Long and wide, over the head of Russell. Needs to touch this before it runs out. Wingard takes it out, does him a favour there. Just an experience there, wasn't it, from Wingard? Because um, when he had that uh, mark in the pocket, I think he just rushed himself. He couldn't, you know, didn't pick the right option. Wasn't a 15 metre kick. That occasion, he would have got a free. So carbon free against Stewart. Ruckman didn't separate according to the umpire. Stewart. Okay, there's your explanation. Cruiser was there first and. Uh, the man who's there first has to give, be given three metres, according to the umpire. Pfeiffer, a wobbler. Cruiser, Stewart with him, fisted away. Gray, Joseph, and it's a high hip and shoulder from Cassisi. Just uh, barreling in a little bit harder now, the Blues. A little bit stung by the coach. Brett might have uh, just, for the first time this year, just had a couple of blunt things to say. Mitch Carter, second year on the rookie list. 60 metre bomb, Gibbs, Marks plays on, should goal oh. to cross the face, but it's given them the lead with 7 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the game. Well, his initial reaction was to handball. Mm. And then I think the person he's going to handball to got in his way. Then it was a half-hearted effort. Let's take another look. Oh. 
Travis Boak. Butcher of both ends. Comes wide. McCarthy the target. Two to beat for Port Adelaide. The ex-Magpie couldn't beat them both. And another ex-Magpie. Scotland picks it up to Watson. Hamble's inboard to Kerno. Into the corridor, Joseph. Nice movement. Carrazzo. Oh, Bauer <laughs> under some pressure. Hacks a kick to half forward, but again, Pierce runs onto it. Ebert. Oh, he was a little too hasty with that handball attempt. Ball tunneled out past Roden. Carrazzo back in. Gibbs trying to make amends. Russell. Turnover. Pierce. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Blues by a point in game one of the three games this afternoon. Well, that is just wasted effort. They busted a gut to win the ball back there, Port Adelaide, as did Carlton. They didn't uh, win that battle, but they got it back in a pretty soft way with a poor kick. Hanson. He's banged this into the goal square. One out with Cruiser. Garlett wants it. He might jump here, Garlett. He got a hand to it. Back of the pack, Trengove. Initial fumble, and Hamble smothered. Collins steals, kicks, goals. Made them pay full price. And Andrew Collins has a couple. And so does Manny Cruiser. That's two intercepts with hands, intercepting uh, one of the Port Adelaide sloppy handballs. This one, I think, from the skipper. That has resulted in a goal. Let's take another look at this one. It's Dom Cassisi. Well, He's too smart with yeah. the hands. He's got too big a reach. The span, the wingspan, <laughs> sure, he's too wide. Andrew Collins, interesting player. Came from Richmond, of course. And uh, he's a renowned goal kicker, a known goal kicker, but had a quiet year last year. He just the two snapped. games last year with that yeah. shoulder injury. Much publicised spot with Sean Grugu, who, for the record, played 21 games last year. So at the moment, he's ahead in that spot. He's in between sides, isn't he, Dwayne? He's not a, a big key position player, but he does mark OK for the, his height. Yeah, I think he's got a bit of a future if he can stay injury-free, though. Pfeiffer. Much better tackling and pressure around the ball now from the Blues, and uh, well led by Hampson in the ruck. He has really jumped hard. Alan Richardson in the Carlton coaches box. Welcome back, Alan. Yeah, much better to be here this time. And Al, they're just the clearance, it looks like they're really putting a lot more forward pressure that Brett Ratton wanted in that first quarter. Yeah, look, disappointing sure in the first quarter, the way that we, we gave them off way too much time and space with the footy, so it has been much better, yeah. Been pretty ha happy with uh, a couple of the bit of ruck work from Sean Hampson. Yeah, look, he's been pretty good forward too, Jared. He's given us a real target. Uh, obviously, Jeffrey Garlick being injected into the game, giving us a bit of life and a bit of speed up there. So that's, we've, we've looked much better with those two having a bit of form. LR to Scotland. The Blues, four and a half minutes left. Thanks, Alan. Trying to mount another charge forward. That was Patrick McCarthy. Kick smothered. In his first game for the Blues. So another debutant they've unveiled. And they've unveiled him back home. Glenelg boy. Same club that gave the Blues guys like Stephen Kernahan and Bryce Gibbs. You're not going to see that kick very often this year. Just out of the reach of LR. Lucky free to Jacobs. Advantage pay. Do you feel the Blues had stopped there? Port Adelaide on the charge forward here with a few Blues trying to make some tracks. Gray. Great Stewart. work. Oh, bang. Now, was that 50. 50? No doubt, Wayne. So he can choose to kick this from outside 50 if he wants the nine or from inside 50 if he wants an attempt at six. That was sensational work ethic from Daniel Stewart because when that ball was on the wing, he's ran from the corridor and worked his way into that position and then was hit after that. Would you take the full 50? They're seven points down. They need a nine-pointer to hit the lead. Three minutes left. Do you go for the nine here or do you take the six? Not if you kick like me. You take the six every time. He's got a big leg. Kick, yeah, well, he can kick a long way. He's elected to go for the six. So even if he kicks the goal, he'll still be behind by a point. He slotted it. They're still in the game, but they're not in front. Not sure it's working the nine pointer. If 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 you the nine pointer to me was brought in so guys have big bombs from outside 50, big barrels. And if you get an opportunity like that, then uh, to me the incentive to kick them sure isn't enough. Maybe they need to go to two goals. <laughs> a 12 pointer. Oh, 12 pointer. What about if the 50 was at 40 for the nap cup? 
Well, you can do that, but we've got a line on the ground. I don't think you need to do that. Well, they can re they redo the line before every game. So I think, in the NAB Cup, they could redo it at 40. I think the underlying sentiment of the nine-pointer was to get the torpedo back so we can have a look at a, <laughs> a kick that uh, is a bit like the drop kick and the step pass and uh, the place kick, sure. If yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we change the line to... Oh, there's an interchange bridge, bridge here. Interchange bridge against Carlton. Port Adelaide's free. Gee, it's been a bizarre, strange, unbelievable game at times here. So it's a 50-metre penalty and the free because of the interchange infringement. That's the new rule. We have interchange infringements. OK, so he's not going for the nine. He's going to take the 50 and go for six to give them a five-point lead or level the scores. Now, because we're in the last two and a half minutes of this second half, the clock stops and we have time on. Well, Peter Rhodes under enormous scrutiny here because before the match he said this kid has got an enormous hoof on him if he gets an opportunity. Jared Redden, pick 54 back in 2008. It's right his fourth off. season. And he is yet to play a senior game. And he is still yet to kick them a goal. And Dwayne, before that interchange breach, uh, Port Adelaide have made a couple of substitutions. Uh, Travis Boak and John Butcher out for Simon Phillips and Mitch Banner for this last five minutes. OK, so scores are level. It's been a few twists in the plot here. Well, 4-10 to 4-1. Mm. Redden again. And got one for too high. Now, this will be for nine if he wants to attempt it. Or go for the pass. He's outside the paint. Scores a level. Oh. Gee, behind would have done just to give them the lead. And it's a free against Robbie Gray. So another strange decision there. Surely you just bang it to the goal line and rush it behind. Well, this this has had everything this game. <laughs> the interchange infringements, a, a touch on the goal line, we don't know, and then Cruz with 50. And kicking oh. in the man the mark from deep in defence. Attack by Cassisi. <laughs> Banner mops it up. Corns might have a go. He heads to the square. Well, they knock it through. Westhoff tried. Russell there. Can't kick it off the deck. Carazzo saves the day. Gives to Watson. Cut off by Corns. He can have the shot for the lead. OK, some experience here, surely. Some boys, 223 games worth of experience. Well, you know Dwayne better than anybody. This is like the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle in this uh, pocket, isn't if it? If you can't kick a point from there, you can't play. Oh. <laughs> what about a goal? And if you kick a goal from there, you are a superstar. Point <laughs> line by six. Well, I think the last point... Well, there's been a few, but... Was it Tony Hall who kicked uh, one in a state game? That brought the house down from that very pocket. Uh, geez, does the Bermuda Triangle actually exist? I don't know. Yeah, it sounds good though. I'm, <laughs> I'm with that pocket Bermuda Triangle at the same rate. I'm not sure it actually exists. The, I think it's the Tony Hall pocket. And on a day with absolutely no breeze at all, uh, there is no excuse from there. Okay, what have the Blues got left? A minute and nine left. We could still have a draw, we could still have a Carlton win with a nine-pointer, but they need the clearance here. They've got Gibbs in the centre, Hampson, Carazzo's in there, Kerno also in there for the clearance. Knocked out to Kerno is good, hands it off to Carazzo, to Gibbs, they worked it nicely. Gibbs with a fend-off, free kick against him. Well, that's uh, unfortunate for the Blues because it was classic ruck work and it should have been a good 50 exit. 50 metres. Oh, boy. Another 50, and this will be another attempt at nine if they want it, or just a kick for six. Okay, so Chad Wingard taking the full 50. Didn't give the ball straight back, the umpire said. Mm. Well, Chad Wingard have got huge wraps on. We've talked about him a bit. He tested well at the draft camp, and every test they've got. Clean hands, endurance, sprints. Thing they don't test yet for at the draft camp. 20 guard, moving in. Shots under pressure. Commitment. No, it's guts and courage. They can't test that, and apparently he's got that in spades as well. Nice off the boot. And Port Adelaide should be home. They lead by 12. Well, it's a darn good effort uh, by the kid to get it across the line for a goal. Not sure exactly what happened here, but we missed the Hampson tap, which was nice. There's the fend-off there. Gee, that was harsh. 
didn't look a hell of a lot. No, that's not the 50. This is what the 50 is for here. Not throwing the ball back straight. So he's telling people where to go before he gave the ball back, which you have to. It's amazing, isn't it? That was pretty tough. That's extremely tough. I mean, he was on his way to hand it back. And then he said, but he said, pick up that man over there. So you can't give instruction or point or move off the line to do something else with the ball in your hand. My goodness. They've had an input in this game, the umpires. From the ball up, Hampson in the ruck. Knocked down by Redden. Hampson tries to manufacture a clearance. Gibbs gets it to Scotland. But it's a 12-point margin with just 20 seconds left. Cool. Thornton Long. Redden makes the commitment, went well back done. with the flight. Now holds it in for a while. Kerno dives in, wraps it up. Umpire will sort it out with the ball up. Well, so Adelaide you know. and Carlton will play game two after this. So the Blues will stay out there. Port Adelaide will have the rest and then face Adelaide in game three later this afternoon. Flick down perfect, Gibbs. Kicks it, goal! Bit better. And it bounces through with two seconds left. Siren sounds it's over. Not even time for maybe a miraculous clearance and a free for the Blues to give them a chance at the draw. It's a six-point victory to Port Adelaide in game one. And some of the most bizarre and difficult to believe passages of play have seen this seesaw a little. Port Adelaide started well, Carlton hit back, took the lead, but Port Adelaide with the last three goals just before that Gibbs goal opened up a handy break and they will now have the extended break with a victory by six points and Carlton to stick around and play the Crows. Well, I think they deserve that Port Adelaide, Jared. I yeah. thought they were, real, they were a lot sharper than Carlton. Carlton worked their way back into the game uh, in that second quarter. But, uh, gee, they struggled across half forward in their first uh, in the first quarter. Down on the boundary line, Jacko's got Kane Corns. I certainly have, uh, and Kane, uh, hot conditions, hot start, but you guys were very impressive. Yeah, I thought especially the first half, you know, our press was really good and really pinned them in and didn't give them much option apart from long down the line. So the boys are really into it and they had a crack, which was the main, main thing. Talk about the press I saw in the first uh, half, 10 to 2 inside 50s. Once you got it in there, it's just an added focus of keeping the ball in there. Yeah, traditionally we've been a really good stoppage team, so the, the idea is to get it inside 50 and then set up for stoppage. So, you know, worked pretty well for us today, but obviously a long way to go and disappointing last year, so a good start for us this year. I noticed in the first half you went in the rooms, can't elected to stay. Any reason behind that, sports science? Yeah, I just get out of the heat, I think, and uh, yeah, it worked pretty well. <laughs> Enjoy the break, see you in game two. Kane Corns with Glenn Jakovic. Blues and Crows fans don't go far. Game two coming up, Adelaide and Carlton straight after this break. I didn't know Dwayne better than anybody. This is like the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle in this uh, pocket, isn't it? You can't it? kick a point from there, you can't play. Four. <laughs> what about a goal? And if you kick a goal from there, you are a superstar. Port Adelaide by six. And that finished up the final margin. Welcome back to Amy Stadium. It was Port Adelaide, uh, the victors in the initial match of three. The Blues disappointing in their first uh, half, but uh, they fought back pretty well. They looked like they may have had the game won, but Port Adelaide struck back. But it was a fascinating game, Shory, with uh, all sorts of... Uh, Issues that we haven't seen before. Yeah, it was amazing half of football, wasn't it? We had the interchange, we had the Johnny Cruiser, we had the goal line. It was just all happening. I, I still think Port uh, deserved to you know, win that game. Uh, they were very good in the first half. And Carlton looked like they were breaking down at half forward. They fixed that a little bit by winning more of the ball around the midfield in the second. We'll get your thoughts in just a sec on those uh, particular issues. But let's go back to the controversial ones. And the first one uh, was... Why wasn't this uh, sent up to the third man in the umpire booth? Well, I think the umpire did come in and say, look, he had the best view of it, that goal umpire. Now, we all know that, but it can be taken out of his hands also. I think that ball had to be all totally over the line for that to be paid a goal, and, and it looked like that, it wasn't. That's damning. No, they yeah. would have seen that vision, sure. But... Yeah, they might have been having a siesta up, uh, up in the box there. So, uh, no, I think that should have been a point. It is an ad cup. We've got to uh, yes. wind yeah. out a few of the possibilities. <laughs> do, do you like the issue of the third umpire in general terms? Yeah, I, I don't mind trialling it. If it's quick, I don't mind that. If it takes too long, they say 40 seconds. Uh, NAB cup, I don't know whether it will be brought in the season. Mm. I think they might have another go at it next year. When they do bring it in, given that we've got three out there, it may 
well be known as the uh, fourth umpire. In fact, yeah. it probably <laughs> we forget about should that. Should be. Uh, we used uh, half a dozen umpires to try and get to the bottom of what happened at uh, half time or just prior to half time. Here's the Matthew Cruz, a nine pointer. Well, I, I think this is self explanatory. He's marked the ball before the siren. That's a 50 metre penalty. The siren goes. Now, Matty Cruz, to me, looks like he's going to kick the ball to the umpire, knowing he's got a free kick or a mark, but yeah. not the 50. So the umpire says, Sorry, you have got a 50. They take him back. Now, let's watch the umpire. There's Matty Cruiser with the ball, Jerry. Watch the umpire who's on the mark. Is he forward of the kick? Because that's where the mark's placed. He is. So I think he has kicked before the mark. No one, they just forgot about the Port Adelaide players. They didn't understand what was happening. And that's a nine-pointer, and, and I think it had to stand. I guess the major issue is uh, the umpires know exactly how far 50 metres is because the square is 50, and he should have kicked it uh, from inside the square by five or six metres. Nevertheless, yep. entertaining stuff here. We'll be back shortly with Adelaide versus the Blues.